Today, let's dissect a leech. This right here is the leech. This leech is used in the treatment of various diseases by bloodletting. First, let's take a closer look at the leech's body. Their body is divided into numerous ring-shaped segments. This is a characteristic feature of annelids. The actual body of a leech is composed of 33 segments, but each segment is further divided into multiple annuli, resulting in a large number of segments. Beneath their skin, they have longitudinal muscles and circular muscles, allowing their body to elongate and contract. So, when you observe them, you can see them extending, contracting, and moving their bodies. And when you flip the leech over, the thinner part is the head, while the broader part is the tail. Under the microscope, if you zoom in, this is the head part, and the tail end is sucker. The leech attaches itself somewhere using the suckers on both sides. And when you zoom in on the inside of the mouth, you can observe three jaws. When bitten by a leech, the affected area often shows a Y-shaped mark. This mark is a reflection of the leech's jaw shape, and the anus is located above the posterior sucker. Since the suckers are usually attached somewhere, the central area of the sucker is not an ideal location for excretion. And if you take a closer look at the ventral side of the leech, you'll notice two distinct openings. These openings are the genital pores where reproductive cells are discharged. The one closer to the head is the male genital pore, and the one below it is the female genital pore. They are hermaphrodites. They engage in mating by aligning their bodies and injecting sperm into each other. They store the sperm received from another individual, and when the time comes to lay eggs, they internally fertilize, and then create a cocoon, within which they lay multiple eggs. So, larvae are born inside the cocoon. Now, let's dissect the leech and observe its internal organs. First, we'll secure the leech in place with pins. Because the leech has nerves passing through the ventral side, it's better to make the incision on the dorsal side, carefully cut from the middle of the dorsal side, and then spread it out and secure it with pins. It will look like this. When you cut the head part a bit more and open it up, you can see their jaws. The jaws have around 100 small teeth, and between these teeth, there are openings connected to salivary glands, which secrete saliva. So, they can both inflict wounds on their prey and inject saliva into the prey's body. And these structures here are where sperm is stored and released. After sperm is generated in the nine pairs of tests, it is stored and later released from this area. So, the male genital pore is located below this area. And below that, there are the female genital pore and connected ovaries. Next, their digestive tract runs straight from the mouth to the anus. The crop is the part where food is temporarily stored. Leech's crop has great elasticity, allowing it to consume a large amount of blood at once. And the consumed blood can be stored in the lateral and posterior cecum, allowing them to survive for up to a year without eating anything after a proper blood meal. Impressive, isn't it? This leech has been fasting for a long time, and there is almost nothing inside the digestive tract. However, you can see that there is still a little blood left here in the posterior cecum. Finally, if we gently split the digestive tract, you can see the ventral nerve cord. Leeches have ganglia, which are clusters of nerve cells, in each segment. They have a total of 32 ganglia from head to tail. These ganglia are interconnected but can also function independently. So, leeches are sometimes referred to as organisms with 32 brains. Fascinating, isn't it? That concludes the leech dissection. If you enjoyed watching, please consider subscribing.